Um, it's nice to see all of you here today. Thanks to Melissa for inviting me. Um, I'm, really, uh, I'm really happy to be a part of this, this effort. Um, my topic uh, for today is environmental benefits of shopping local and using farmers markets. Um, so what I've done here is I've written all of this text, which I hope takes us to about 20 minutes. I apologize for the format, but you know, uh, since people were showing up and we're doing it inside this room and we're only doing it once, I kind of wanted to get it right as opposed to uh, you know being particularly engaging. So um, I may not be as engaging, but I hope that what I have in here is actually useful uh, for, for all of our knowledge. Um, so I'm a professor in the philosophy department, and I teach sustainability classes also at Bellarmine uh, University, the senior seminar. Um, and then the Echo Reps program, as Melissa pointed out, is uh, sustainability education and service on campus, and uh, we, we love volunteers. So, all right, what I've done is I've organized this into 10 points, um, and the first five points are in about what I think people are typically thinking of when they think of environmental benefits um, of shopping local and, and particularly using farmers markets. So, for one, anytime we drive, there are emissions. Uh, there, uh, there's also the petroleum extraction and refining on the front end of you know that fuel process. There are lower emissions from bringing food to farmers markets when comparing local transport to regional, national, and international transport. Certainly, this is not always the case, and there's a lot of data out there if we go and look on the internet that seeks to contradict this. But what happens very often is very extreme cases are used as opposed to more common cases. Um, to make the economic case that maybe that there's not this benefit. But in fact, in fact, there really seems to be, particularly when we factor in things like walking traffic for shopping. Um, and all of this, of course, depends on distances. On a whole, though, the local drive to get the product to market will produce fewer emissions than the farther drive. Of course, we want to make sure our vehicles are fuel efficient, we want to make sure we're carpooling, and we want to make sure we're limiting the number of trips back and forth from the market for supplies, if we're a supplier. If suppliers can do these three things, maintain fuel efficiency in transport vehicles, carpool, and plan market days so that multiple trips back and forth to the farm are unnecessary, farmers markets can beat big box stores in fuel emissions uh, per food item all day long. Okay, second point. Shopping adjacent to the market provides opportunities to visit local businesses without an added trip. In Louisville, where people love their cars and the infrastructure is much more car friendly, than it is to any other form of transportation. Um, this will save driving, which saves fossil fuels. When people show up at the Gray Street Farmers Market, they enter the urban area by driving past other businesses. Whenever we organize our trip to provide this knock-on business for those in the area that are not part of the Farmers Market, uh, we support the local businesses in Louisville's downtown. We should do more than notice the trendy and useful merchants along our commute to the Farmers Market, and for many people here, your daily commute. Um, we should also stop and patronize those merchants with our foot traffic and by pulling over at their businesses before we leave the area. So this is my second point. Third point, farmers markets support the preservation of local and regional open space by that space being used for agriculture. Okay, so if we talk about market demand, economic factors, um, this, um, this makes a difference. It reduces cement and asphalt use both of which contribute to the overheating of our cities and the, sinking, and the shrinking of green spaces generally. Um, we all know about urban sprawl. Uh, many of us live in it today not realizing that the shopping center where we trade or our, our office building um, is sitting on space that was essentially underdeveloped or undeveloped over a gener only a generation ago. My family has spent four generations growing up in Louisville, and I've heard the stories about how I used to play in that empty field or how the land used uh, over here for this used to be so beautiful before it was developed. Now don't get me wrong, I also think that responsible, efficient, and thoughtful development is beautiful too. Part of urban and suburban development must be responsible thinking and action around unused green spaces. Um, these are places where the wildlife that's so rapidly disappearing lives. This is where the trees are often clustered and so they become vital places for carbon dioxide exchange. The water in these areas has the potential to be drinkable if it's protected by sustainable land management practices and policies. Agricultural settings, like those that support our farmer's market, can help manage land toward non-industrial use, uh, which is a shift we need to make for our own health and the well-being of future generations. My fourth point, farmer's markets promote biodiversity. 
Industrial agribusiness cultivates crops that are raised in monocultures for easy planting, harvesting, and transport. The monocultures themselves do some environmental harm, however, and simultaneously threaten our food supply. Crops thrive when they are grown like they are found in nature, with other plants and among a rich diversity of animal species. Our ability to sustain the environment we live in is limited without this diversity in planting practices. Since farmers markets typically pull from farmers selling multiple crops, many of which also uh, use uh, crops that are native to the local environment, the harms of monocultures are avoided through the need for economic diversity on the farmer's parts. Such farmers also benefit from raising crops which are uh, local and because these native crops are more likely to thrive here. So when we support farmers markets, we support those farmers and planters who are more likely to en engage in diverse cultivation of local crops. Finally, for my fifth point, supporting farmers markets encourages small batches. This promotes quality practices for the land and the consumer. While we can't know whether local farmers use organic practices or not, unless they're organically certified, which most are not, um, we do not know, or we do know that larger monocultures and agriculture of any type demands more powerful and more prevalent pesticides and fertilizers, and at the far end of that spectrum, genetic modification of crops. Encouraging farmers who are interested in food quality and diversity rather than just going big sets us up to avoid the contamination of our food supply by encouraging more environmentally friendly growing practices. This translates into fewer harmful substances in and on the food you take home from the market. So these five points are the, are the ones that I thought people usually think about when they think of environment. And so I started there. How am I doing on time? Doing great. Doing great. All right, good. Um, I don't know what that means exactly, but I'll take it. Yeah, you're halfway through. Yeah, you're halfway through. Oh, perfect. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I wanted to draw. I'm sorry. Okay. No, that's fine. Okay, okay. So, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to expand my understanding of environment uh, because, uh, you know, I grew up in the city. So, you know, certainly with parks, with some green spaces, um, but, you know, in some cases without. Um, and there are certainly areas um, of our own community here that don't have those green spaces available. And so when we talk about environment and the impacts of farmer's markets, we can't just think about the green environment, right? We also need to think of the concrete environment, the urban environment, um, you know, which is, of course, a big part of the reason we need the farmer's market standard in the first place. So one of the changes um, that's occurred for me as I've been doing this work is to gain a broader understanding of environment. We all live in environments, um, even if we're locked in, a, in an urban concrete jungle with no green spaces in sight. If you think we shouldn't view our city through that lens, consider that Louisville was just awarded a 49th out of the 50 largest U.S. cities for its parks. Did you all see that? Came, I think it came out yesterday. 49th out of 50. I thought there was a math problem, right? Because I always think, you know, the city of parks, like what are you, you know, what are you talking about, right? And of course, if we live um, in the highlands or maybe in some suburbs, we, we, we can, still, can still see that. Um, but if we live in Butchel or Shively or Portland, the amount of space dedicated to parks drops off dramatically. Apparently, the finishing of the 21st Century Parks Initiative will address much of this concern far from our urban center, but that still doesn't help people living without open space today. We should be thinking about our environment in larger, deeper, and more sustainable ways. So here are five more ideas about how shopping local and using farmers' markets can help our larger understanding of environment. Let's remember the principle of resilience, the ability to withstand shocks to our environment. The more farmers we have, the more diversity there is in our local food supply. Should some catastrophe befall the corporate giants who supply most of us or, uh, or some unknown threat to crops descends upon the area. So that's an important idea, right? Where, you know, more farmers with you know, growing more crops creates a certain amount of resilience within our food supply. The closer they are, the easier we can get to them. This leads us to food security issues. How many days of food are in local grocery stores should there be a crisis? It's tough to conceptualize, but I encourage you to consider it. If the roads were cut off, if the power went out, if we couldn't get any more shipments, we would need to rely upon only the food on hand at Kroger, Whole Foods, Pick Pack, Value Market, Rainbow Blossom, and the others. Having local farmers of any and all sizes would help us avoid some of the panic and chaos that would inevitably accompany such a shock to our environment. I bring this up, of course, because, you know, every environmentalist you talk to talks about the, you know, the impending doom, right? A lot of us are, are expecting some sort of shocks, serious shocks, to hit our food supply. This is a way to deal with that on some level. If we know who the farmers are, we can ask questions. 
We can track habits. We can follow progress. We can avoid the errors and the ignorance that arises within us, which we then act upon amazingly, when we don't have any idea what kind of ethical actor our food provider actually is. Get to know your farmers. They want to know you in order to build commercial relationships. Use that mechanism to your advantage. Get to know them for your own peace of mind. When you know the farmer, you know where the food's been. If you, can, if you care about your food, care about where it's been, what's been happening to it, how you got it, and all the rest, then you should extend your notion of food value beyond either economics or calories. These are two powerful ways of valuing food, and they dominate our conversations, particularly in the U.S., but we need to begin to think seriously about the value of carbon footprint, labor rights, water usage, land management, additives, taste, and so forth. Right? There are many ways to value our food, and human eaters benefit from knowing more rather than less on this issue. Farmers markets give us a way in to that body of knowledge that we can't get in a retail environment. Because in the retail environment, of course, we have to believe the advertising, right? I mean, that's, that's what tells us it's the advertising. And so that's different. Being in a farmer's market allows us to pull the cover back from that to a certain degree. Certainly, everyone presents themselves the way they want to present themselves, but we're several, several uh, steps closer in, in the farmer's market environment. <laughs> Finally, by encouraging resources to stay within the community, we strengthen our communities. We grow the local economies and we support local interests. Keep the food wealth, however you describe it, in this community by shopping at farmer's markets whenever you can. Buy local and support local enterprise. And keep the talent in Louisville. Improve your community, your soil, your daily commute, your relationships, and thereby your own quality of life by supporting the efforts of local farmers here and everywhere. That's what I have. Thanks for your time.